This is our complete Final Cut Pro tutorial for beginners on Mac. We're gonna take you through step-by-step step how to use it, including a ton of video editing tips and tricks along the way, all to get you editing videos with Final Cut like a pro in no time. Now, if you've already been using Final Cut for a while, drop a comment down below while you're watching this video and let me know your number one tip for editing with Final Cut. This will help out others that are watching as well. Okay, so we're over here now in Final Cut. And the first thing you wanna do if it's not already created is to create a new library file. So you wanna come up to File, New Library, and give it a name. You can choose where you wanna save it, but Movies is the default, and hit Save. And that's kind of your project file, or the place that all the files associated with this video are gonna be saved. Now, quick rundown of the overall interface up here is right now showing our main library window where we can see our library that we've just created, and this is where we'll see all of our files as we import them as well. We can also switch across to our photos and music view, and we've got titles and generators up here too. Now this will make more sense as we go through. This next area here is your preview monitor, your playback monitor. This is where you can see your video editing masterpiece as you build it. This area over here is where all of your editing effects and controls and everything will show up. And down the bottom area here, this is your timeline area. So we'll go back over here to our library area and now we're gonna import our video footage. So we can just click on here, import media or we can choose File, Import Media. We can then navigate through to find all of our files. Now we don't need to import everything one by one. We can just come down the bottom here to import all and that would bring everything into our project. Now one thing I do want to point out up here is that we do have the option to copy the files into our library so that again, everything is saved in that one library file or we can actually leave all of these video files and audio files and everything in place so that Final Cut is just linking off to them. Now this is typically what most video editing software does. It just creates a link to it without copying it in. So for me personally, I'd normally leave it as leave the files in place. So then we're gonna go import all. And then we can see that all those video files and everything are now here in our Final Cut project to use. So now that we have our files imported, we now wanna create an editing project. So we can come down here and click on this new project. Or if I cancel out of that, again, we can go file, new project. We can give this a name. Let's just call this video one, very original. Now, typically what I'll do here is just leave this as default and just hit okay. But you can come in here and use custom settings. So if you do have a specific video format or resolution or codec that you wanna use, then you can specify all of that here. But if you just go use automatic settings, this is going to create a new video editing project based on the first video clips properties. So as long as the first video clip matches what you want your output to be or the video you wanna create, then this is definitely the easiest way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and go okay. And then we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna grab our primary camera footage, this one here, footage. And I'm going to click and drag that down onto the timeline. Now you can hear as I scrub across here, you're actually hearing the audio of what's playing underneath. That's something that I personally don't use very often. So I'm gonna come over here and turn this off for this tutorial. We just wanna press this button here, audio skimming on or off. And now when we move our mouse cursor around, we don't have that noise going on. So from here, what we're gonna to start to do is to cut down our primary video footage remove all the bad takes, all the mistakes, anything that we actually don't wanna have in our finished video project. And with a video like this, it's cool that you can see down the bottom here, your audio waveforms or the visual representation of the audio in our video. So we can see here, these blank spots are where you can see on screen, I'm not talking. I'm adjusting the teleprompter or I'm thinking about what I'm about to say. So this makes it really easy for us to quickly see the areas that I'm talking and not talking so that we can go through and remove them. So we're gonna start at the start of the video and I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline by pressing Command and Plus so that we have more detail and more control. So if I just hit play on this now, just pressing spacebar, you can see that I've talked for a little bit here, just got ready, quick mic check, audio check, and then I've actually started the video about here. So there's a couple of different ways that we can remove the start so that our video starts at this point. We can literally come across here to the start of the clip and our cursor changes to these two arrows. I can click and hold on the edge of the clip and I can drag that across to where I want the video to start. Once I let go, that is now the new start point of the video. Now, if I undo that with Command Z, another way that we can do it is move this red bar, move our mouse cursor across to where we want there to be a cut. I can then press Command B on the keyboard and that is going to blade or cut the timeline at that point. Then from there, I can click on the clip and press delete and that clip has been removed. Another way that we can quickly trim this down is by entering the blade mode. So if we press B on the keyboard or we come up here to this arrow here and come down to blade, you can see these are the different modes that we've got access to. So with the blade mode or scissors mode enabled, I can literally just move across the timeline here and then whenever I click, 
it's going to create a cut at that point in the timeline. So we can add a cut there and we can see that I start talking again here. I can add another cut there, come across a bit further. We can add another cut here and here. And then when we switch back to our normal select tool using A on the keyboard or coming up here and selecting this, I can then select that clip, press delete, select the next clip, press delete. So we're able to go through and get rid of anything that we don't want very, very quickly. Now, one other really powerful way that you can start to trim down your footage fast is by using ripple edit. So let's just say that the start of this clip was all good right up until this point here. And we wanted to remove everything beyond this to where we got another cut in our timeline here. So we could just come back here. We could use Command B or the Blade tool to add a cut. We could select it and delete it as I just showed you. Or we can actually press Ripple Edit Right, which is the keyboard shortcut option and square bracket right. So if we press that now, that's done the exact same thing. It's essentially bladed the clip, is selected it and deleted it all with one keyboard press. So ripple edit right, option square bracket right will remove everything to the right to the next cut and option square bracket left will remove everything back to the left. So let's say that from this point here, we wanted to remove everything back to that cut. We can use ripple edit left, option square bracket left, and it's going to perform that action for us. So let's come across to the very end of our video here, and we can see that we have some blank space here where I finished recording. Not quite sure what I'm doing at this point, but we could either just come and grab this end here and move it back, or we could come to this point here where we want it to stop. And again, you could be playing your video at this point and stopping it where you want it to actually stop. And then we use option square bracket right, and it's going to remove that area for us. So what you wanna do now with those tools is you wanna go through, you wanna remove any bad takes, any mistakes, anything that you don't want to have in your finished video. And while you're going through, if you want to pick up and move any clips around or any chunks of footage, you can literally just click on them, pick them up and move them around to build out the story that you're after. So now that we've gone through and we've removed everything we don't want included, the next step is to bring in any B-roll or overlay footage. So I've got some clips up here from a SwitchPod video that we did. I'm just going to click and drag on this one and I'm going to bring it down into our timeline. I'm going to draw it on top of our primary video layer. Now just the same as all the other clips here, we can pick this up, we can move it around, we can make adjustments to the ends of the video, the start and the finish. We can go through and we can find the area of the clip that we want to use. So let's say we want to start it about here. We can press Command B to blade that start. We can remove that and now we're left with this is where we want our clip to start. And let's say we want it to finish about here. I can then add another cut and I can remove this end section. Now if we zoom in on this, come back across, we can see that there is some audio for this clip here as well. Now depending on the video that you're making, you may or may not want that sound in your video. If you want to remove it, you can just come up here to this volume line, click on it and then pull right down to the bottom and we've now muted the audio on that clip. Let's go ahead and add in another clip to our timeline. Let's pick this one here, drag it down. Let's take a quick skim through. Okay, so we do a, no, first take wasn't good. The second one's the one we wanna use. So let's get rid of that first piece. Find the piece where we wanna start the clip. It's gonna be back up here, right here, before Caleb starts to swing the switch pod again. So I'm going to trim off everything to the left of this point using option square bracket left. Our clip now starts here. He opens the switch pod, puts the camera down. There is some movement around here. Now, just before he comes back in to pick it up, let's cut it here, Command B, and we can just remove the rest of this clip. I'm gonna lower the volume because we don't want any sound in that clip. And we now have some extra B-roll footage, which we can then move around and put in our timeline wherever we'd like it. So go ahead and add in all of your B-roll and overlay footage at this point. Once your overlay footage is in, we're gonna now add in any titles or text into your videos. So let's come back across to the start of our project here. We wanna come up to the text and generators area, and we're gonna open up this drop down here for titles. Now there are some pretty cool titles that are built in here in Final Cut, or you can also go to places like Video Hive to grab more motion and animated titles that you can use in your projects from there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a basic title. I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna drag it down onto the timeline where we want it. Let's move it over a bit. So at the start of the video, I will start talking and then we'll have a title come up with my name. So to edit this, we just wanna double click on the purple layer here. We can see that we've got all of our controls and everything on the side here. So I'm gonna type in Justin Brown, Primal Video. Now we can change the font, Oswald. Let's go bold. 
Now we can pick this up here by clicking on that little black marker and we can move this to where we want it in the video. Then if we come down here, we've got some more controls that we can open up these tabs. So if you click on show for face, then this is going to let us change the color, the opacity, the blur. So maybe I'll come back up here to line spacing and let's close up that gap a little bit. And maybe I'll select the bottom line of text here and come down to face. Let's change the color of that to more of like a primal video blue. Maybe I'll move it down a little bit more. And if we deselect that, we've now got this title in place. So at the start of the video, I'm talking, title appears at this point, and then we get to choose where we want it to disappear, probably around here. We can then grab the end of our clip, shorten it down, or use the other tools that you got access to as well to set it to how long you wanna have it on screen. Now there is definitely fancier titles and things in here that you can add. Literally just drag them on to your timeline and to edit them up. Or again, you can check out places like Video Hive that have some really awesome looking titles. So you wanna go through now and add in any titles or text into your video. From there, we're gonna look at adding in any transitions and effects onto your footage. So we zoom back out a little bit now. Let's come over here to this button here, which will open up all of our transitions. And you can see if we put our mouse over these, the different types of transitions or effects that are in here. So this is a simple cross dissolve. There's uh, some fancier ones in here as well. So I would suggest that you use these sparingly. This is a quick way that you can make your videos look very unprofessional. So the ones I'll normally use is a simple cross dissolve or a dip to white or a dip to black. So to show you what this looks like, we can grab this cross dissolve here. Let's just put it on the start of our text. And you can see it's automatically added that at the start and at the end for us. So now if we play through this, we can see that instead of just our text appearing, it's fading on for that duration. And then it fades out at the end. Now we can adjust how long these fades or these effects are on screen for or happening for by clicking and dragging this area here. So you can see now it's gonna have a longer fade out or a slower fade out. So another place that you could use transitions is when you're cutting from having say yourself on screen like this to our B-roll footage. For that, I'm gonna use a dip to black or a fade to color. So we're gonna come over here to dissolves, fade to color. I'm going to drag that onto our clip. So as default here, it's gonna fade me out to black and then it's gonna bring back in this clip. Now, while that could work, it's not really the look that I'm after. So I'm gonna click on this transition. I'm gonna come up here to color. I'm gonna make it white. Then I'm gonna come back down here again with that selected. I'm gonna shorten this down because that's really long. So I'm gonna click on this transition effect, grab the side of it here and shorten this down to, let's go five. Now, if we play this through, just a really quick transition, almost like a camera flash, just to break it up a little bit. And if we don't want one on the other end, we could just select it here, press delete, and it's just gonna cut straight back to us. Now the other place that's common to use transitions is between your primary footage. But in a video like this and with our YouTube videos, I wouldn't add a cross dissolve or a fade or a dip to black or anything when the shots are pretty much the same. So to break those up and to try and hide the cuts where there is a mistake or I've cut something out, Instead, I will zoom in on one of the shots. I'm gonna select this clip here. I'm gonna come up the top here to transform. We wanna hit show. And then I'm gonna come over here to scale. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit to make it look like it's a separate camera angle. Now, depending on how you've shot your footage, you really don't wanna zoom in too much because you'll likely be losing quality. But we can see now, if we look at the difference between these two clips, one of them is zoomed in, it almost looks like a different shot. Now, in order to really sell this effect, you wanna make sure that if you've got a person on screen like we do now, you wanna make sure that their eyes are very close to being in a similar position. So let's move this one down a little bit. Let's see if we're a bit closer now. So it's not perfect, but it's much better, much more seamless of a transition. So you go through now and add in any transitions, any effects or any zoom ins to your footage. Now, if you do wanna slow down or speed up any of your footage, let's select this one here. We wanna come up to this little drop down arrow here. And there are some presets in here to say, slow it down to 50%, 25%, 10. We can speed it up. We can always reset it back to normal. We can freeze it. Or there are some different presets in here, speed ramp. So it's gonna start at 100% and it's going to slow slowly drop down to zero or likewise back the other way. So let's say that we wanted to slow this down by half, 50%, we can just select that. And now this clip here is now in slow motion. Now, if you wanna customize this up further, say you don't want 50, you might want 60. We can then come up to this little arrow here once you've got a speed effect applied and we can click and drag on that to make the video either a certain speed or to fit a certain length on your timeline. Now, next up, we're gonna add in any music tracks or sound files onto our video. So let's come back to the start here. Let's come over here to our files. Now, if you don't have any music imported, you can choose file, import, 
media, go through and find your files to import. I imported mine at the start, so I've got two music tracks here. You can also find music tracks that are saved on your computer through Apple Music or Photos or GarageBand in this area here. And if you are looking for great music tracks to use in your videos, we use Epidemic Sound and Artlist as our two main places, and I'll have links to those in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this music track here. I'm gonna drop it down into our timeline. And again, these behave just like every other video clip. We can pick them up, we can move them around, we can trim them, we can remove sections of it. But let's come across to the end here. And obviously we've got our video that finishes here. So we want to make sure our music track finishes about the same sort of time. And if I zoom in on this here, let's say we want to fade this out at the end. So it's not just our music track finishes at that point, we can fade it out so it's a nicer finish. You can see that we've got this line here, our volume line. Next to that though, on the end is the little ball that shows up. It's pretty hard to see. If we click on that and move that back, then this is controlling our fade. So wherever we start this, our volume is going to be 100% or whatever level we have it set to till that point, till that marker, and then it's going to start to fade out to nothing. Now you can do that on the start as well if you'd like. You can come back over here. You've got that little ball marker there that we can drag to the side to fade our music in there too. Now when you've added your music tracks, you might want to go back through and play back your video clip. You might adjust any of your edits, tighten things up, match your cuts to the beat. Again, depends on the type of video you're making. And then from there, we're going to adjust our audio levels. Now what I suggest you do here is that you're getting the volume levels sorted on your primary video footage first. So any spoken pieces, get that audio set right first, and then we're going to adjust our music tracks and sound effects and things after. So I'm just going to turn down the volume on our music here right now down to nothing, grab that line, pull it all the way down so that we're just going to hear our primary footage. The other thing I like to do is to turn on our audio bars. So if we come up here to window, show in workspace, and then we're going to choose audio meters. And then over here on the side, we've now got our audio bars or audio meters that are going to show up when we're playing our clip. So what we want to do here is we want to adjust this first clip to get it to the volume level that we want so that it's not too loud and it's not too quiet. Now with the clip selected, we can come over here to audio and we can adjust our volume here. You can adjust it using that line on the timeline here that I've already showed you. But one thing that's really cool in Final Cut is that our audio waveforms here that actually gives a representation of your volume level too. So you can see that if I turn the volume level up here, that the color changes. We're seeing some go into yellow, some bits are red, and that's telling us that our audio is too loud. So likewise on our audio bars here, if we're playing this through now, you can see that we're hitting the red. As you can see that on our timeline here as well. We don't want to be into the red. So the ideal volume level is green just into the yellow or orange, but definitely not up into the red. So I really like that you can see that here on your timeline as well. So you could just use the timeline here and adjust it to the point where none of it is clipping, none of it is maxing out into the red, which that all looks pretty good. Or you can hit play on your clip and just see where your volume levels are at and make adjustments up or down from there. Now from there, you can go through and adjust these on a clip by clip basis. Or if you make adjustments to say the first clip, like we've done here, we can then come up to edit, copy. Let's zoom out so we can see all the rest of our clips here. Let's draw out a box around all the rest of our clips to select them. We can then choose edit, paste attributes. And what we want to paste and apply to all of these other clips is our volume level that we made an adjustment to. So we hit paste and now that same volume setting, which just happened to be zero in this case, was now applied to the rest of our clips. So now that we've got our primary footage volume correct, we're now going to come back down to our music. Let's just make this a bit bigger and let's bring that volume back up. Now this one really is personal preference as to how loud the music is going to be in the background of your video. For us, what we find depending on the track is anywhere from negative 30 to negative 20 is sort of a good starting place. But you might also find that in some areas of the video, you want the music louder and then quieter in others. So you could just add a cut in your timeline where you want to make an adjustment. So we select that bottom clip, command B to cut it, and we can have the different volume levels you can see here for the different clips or for the different sections. Or if I undo that, Command Z, if you press R on the keyboard, that's gonna open up the range selector. So let's say that for the start of this clip here, we want the volume level louder up until about this point. 
I can draw out this box here with this range selector. And now I can make adjustments to just that range. So the volume is going to start down. You can see it's automatically added keyframes for us. It's boosted our volume for this point, And then it's lowering them back down to where it is on our remaining clips. So I've got another little area here where we want to boost some music up for whatever reason. We can do exactly the same. So this is a really cool feature that Final Cut has to help you automatically keyframe your volume levels so fast. So now that your music's in and the volume levels are sorted, next we're going to color grade or color correct our videos. So we want to again select the first clip. Let's make all our adjustments to that. Then we can apply them to our remaining clips. So with that first one selected, we can do an automatic adjustment or a white balance adjustment, and that could be enough for you. So if we want to come up here to this little magic wand and let's go to balance color, that's done an automatic adjustment. It tweaked the colors a little bit. If we turn that on and off, it's very subtle, but it has made some minor adjustments. But what I would normally do here is change this method from automatic to white balance. And then we get this little eyedrop and we can select on the screen here the area that we want to set the white balance from. It says to set the white balance, click or drag over an area that should be pure white. So we could pick this bright area here and you can see that that's now adjusted the white balance according to this area. We could press the white highlight here on the plaque. You can see it's making subtle adjustments to our shot. The shelf in this case was white, so I'm going to pick the shelf and that's given us a pretty good start. Now from here, we can come up here to the color area and in here there is so many more controls to really help you dial everything in. These are professional grade tools in here. Now we're by no means going to run through them all, but a great place to start is just with this basic one that comes up first where you get control over your exposure, your saturation and your color. So let's go over to the exposure tab and in here we can adjust the exposure or the brightness for our overall shot just using this one primary slider here on the left, or we can get more granular by adjusting the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So if we grab this black one here, it's going to make adjustments to just the dark area of our shot. And again, I'm just grabbing these and moving them up and down. So midtones, it's like skin tones, can make adjustments there, and then the highlights or the bright areas. From there, I'd be moving over to the color area. And again, we can do the entire shot, or we can do the shadows, midtones, or highlights individually. So I'm going to grab this primary one, the master one, and you can see if we move this around, we can really dramatically change the colors here. So you don't want to go too crazy with this. Maybe around there is not looking too bad. And again, this is personal preference. Maybe we'll grab the midtones, move those a little bit, and then we can come over to saturation. And this is really the amount of color, the intensity of the color. So if we pull this right down to nothing, it's going to remove all the color. If we crank it right up, it's going to amplify it dramatically. So again, we're just making minor adjustments to this to dial in the look that you're after. Now just for a really quick before and after, if we hit the little check box here, we can turn it on and off. This was before, this is after. So again, not a massive difference, just some minor adjustments. And again, to apply this to the rest of our clips, we can come over here, we can choose edit, copy, can zoom out so we can see the rest of our timeline, select all the rest of the clips, come up here and choose edit, paste attributes. In this case, we want to paste our balance and our color board, and we're going to choose paste and that is now applied to all the rest of our clips as well. So you want to go through now and adjust the colors in your video, even your B-roll clips as needed. And then it is time to export your video. So you want to come up here and choose File, Share, Export File. You want to come across here to Settings. And then in here, you've got quite a few settings. Where I normally leave this is I'll leave the format under Mastering. So we're getting a decent quality video. I'm choosing Video and Audio. Now, if you do find that you need a smaller file size, you can select Apple Devices, Computer, or web hosting. But for me, what we use is video and audio. Now, if I want to save out a really high quality version of the video for mastering, for backup, then I'll be choosing Apple ProRes. If I want a video to upload for YouTube, though, then I'm just going to select H.264. That's still going to give me a great looking video for YouTube, but it's also going to give me a much smaller file size. I'm then going to hit next. I'm going to give the video a name. I'm going to choose where I want it saved and I'm going to hit save. And then that is exporting out. Now to check how long your export has left, you can click on this little circle up the top here and we can see that that is sharing or saving out our video. Once that's finished, you want to play back your video make sure it all looks good, sounds good. Ideally, you're going to play it back on another device, on a phone or something, just to make sure that everything is all good and as you want. If you've got any further changes, obviously you're going to come back in here and make those adjustments and re-save out your file. But when it's good to go, then it's time to release it. 
to the world. So that's a complete walkthrough for beginners in Final Cut. Now don't forget to grab your free download of the entire video editing process step by step that I just ran you through that you can print out, you can follow along next time you're editing in Final Cut or any video editing software. There is a link on screen to grab your free copy and I will see you in the next video.